Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. As we all know that in the previous tutorial, we have learned about BNFS, BNFS order, which is Borkus Nor Form order. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So, in this tutorial, we will be going through grammar and derivations, guys. Guys, this is really an easy concept. It may be complex when you are observing it, but once you understand it, it's really, really easy, guys. So, a grammar is generative device for defining a language. So it is going to give the meaning to a sentence and everything. It is the main part of a programming language or anything, guys. So the sentence of language are generated through sequence of applications of rules. So one after the other, the rules will be applicate, applicated, beginning with a special non-terminal grammar called as a start symbol. So we will be using a start symbol and then the start rule applies application is called as derivation. So let us take a small example here. Let us assume there is a language like prolog or something else. So here STM is nothing but a statement. So let us assume that we are beginning the program. That is I kept an arrow so that it will be clear for you. So there we are beginning the program. Okay fine. This arrow indicates that uh, this is this whole part is substituted in this prolog. Okay fine. So this is prolog. So that's our program. Okay program. So I started it with beginning and statement. So the program is like this guys, begin, statements, okay, will not be having parenthesis, right? So these things and at the end I, I wrote end, right? So this is beginning and end shows that these are the starting and ending points of the program and in between them there are some statement list. So now let us go in detail in statement list guys. So let us assume in statement list we got statement or statement and we also we may also have statement list also again we may have list like right guys so that may be a statement or statement or it might be a statement list so let us assume if it is a statement so if it is a statement what it will be having as it will be having a variable with an assignment operator with an expression so let us assume the variable as a or b or c there are three variables so expression we can assume it as variable 1 plus variable 2 plus variable 3 Okay, so even you can, you can place plus guys or or among those two variables, we will be selecting one like that. So, now I hope everyone got a small idea on this guys. So, let us go through a small example. This is also an example in a similar way. So, let us go through a small example so that it will be clear for you. So, let us assume we want to write P is equals to Q into P minus P. Okay, P minus P. Fine. So, now basically I will be assuming this whole expression as EXP. This is my user defined name. That is simplifying. We will be having an identifier on the left side and we are having an expression on the right side. So let us assume the identifier is nothing but P. We can write directly where the expression is also having an identifier into one more expression. Just by observing you can say that guys, right? If it is individually, that is what we call as identifier and if it is having with some particular signs in between themselves, then we call it as expression. So now we are done till here. So expression now we identified the identifier and placed Q. Now we are left out with expression. So that expression will be nothing but now it will be identifier minus expression or identifier minus identifier. So that's what expression expression we can write it as identifier minus expression fine. So P minus expression. So that is nothing but P minus R. So that's how we write the grammar derivations guys. This is R it seems. So the, this is how we write the grammar derivations. So in the next tutorial, we will be learning how to draw a parse tree for an expression, guys. Okay, so now I hope everyone got a small idea. So in this tutorial, we will be going through parse tree for a given expression, guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching.